answer is saying at the moment of the 8 verse 9 scheduling thing? Well, based on the information, the last information that I was given, uh, which the last time it was really discussed at length with the coaching with the coaches that I'm aware of was last year at this uh, meeting. I'm, I'm on the nine game schedule. Uh, I, I like the setup of, of three permanents. I think the more permanents that you have, the more that you can measure your program against uh, consistent opponents. I also think, um, you know, it preserves the, the um, basis of the SEC. I think, you know, the Southeastern Conference is the best conference in college football because of its fans and the passion of its fan base. Uh, and I think you run the risk of, of losing that with short-sightedness of, uh, well, this schedule's not fair for me. Uh, it's not fair for me if I have to play eight or blah, blah, blah. I think the reality of it is preserving the uh, primary and secondary rivalries of this league, I think, are important to the league. I think it's important to the fan base. I think it's important now more than ever with the competition for uh, dollars and passion in sports. Uh, you move too far away from it, you're going to open the door for fans to travel to uh, other venues for entertainment. Do you get the sense that most coaches um, have that mindset of what's best for the league, what's best for fans? Or no, I think most coaches, I mean, I, I don't blame them. Um, most coaches are wired because of the, the um, golly, I'm with a bunch of journalists, I lost my words. <laughs> uh, with, with the uh, High turnover of our jobs, right? It, it's it's hard to it's hard to have any vision other than what's right in front of us for the next six months, and totally understand that it would be more favorable uh, in some instances. I, my argument is that um, you know, with one permanent and seven consistent rotating games, you, there's not enough um, consistency in that schedule, and we don't have enough control over who those seven games are. I mean, our conference uh, ebbs and flows with teams that are up and down, you know except for maybe the top two or three. And so you may get a year where you, you know, your seven games, you match up with uh, a team that's uh, having a heck of a run, you know, and I don't know that there's gonna be enough consistency. When there's consistency of your opponents for three straight, you know, you know these are the three teams that I'm gonna play. Uh, you can kind of measure yourself and are you improving um, or did I just run into one of the seven teams that were having an unbelievable year and, and really did well out of the portal or blah, blah, blah. So if it does end up eight, can you find any positives in that? Like if it did yeah, end if it up that? ends up at eight, I've got four non-conference games that will have the ability to control the schedule. Totally understand that. Uh, but I do think Commissioner Sankey makes a fair point. We'd be the only Power Five school with an eight-game conference schedule. So uh, you know, I don't know that that's um, the best look for our league either. Eli, how important is it when you're recruiting, particularly maybe a kid outside the footprint? Of the FCC, and you can tell them, "Hey, you come stay four years, you'll go to every, every one home and away." Is that a joke? <laughs> I'm being serious. Like, what what kids do we have that are staying for five years now? <laughs> I mean, I I just got a list of the transfer portal. Like that that's one of the most ridiculous arguments I've heard about why we should have non divisions and rotate people through the league. Like, I, I don't even understand that argument. Um, I, yeah. I, that, that is that that is trying to justify your reasoning without having real facts. It's like, oh, we'll we'll throw this one out there. But look at college football and how much has changed in the last three years, um, and how much roster turnover there is. Um, outside of a few walk-ons who really love your program, there's very few guys that are going to stay in your. I mean, we ought to give out medals for those guys. I mean, that other they ought to be here at the SEC awards. <laughs> Eli, what is Georgia getting in, in Dominic Lovett? Really good player. A uh, great young man, high character man, works really hard. Uh, obviously, was really good for us. We see uh, issues in gambling arising. What's your approach with your team about that issue? And is there an element of surprise, or was that just kind of inevitable in your mind? <sighs> Y'all really are trying to get trouble here <laughs> um, there's just not enough I mean we're trying to give actually Deion Sanders had a really good quote the other day talking about young men are uh, joining a business but we want to treat them like kids um, we're giving guys 18 19 20 21 22 year old life-changing money 
if people are making more money in NIL than my brother-in-law, who's a pediatrician who saves lives, uh, and we kind of do it cavalier, and we think that there's not going to be any side effects or there's not going to be issues. I mean, um, there's information out there. There's bad actors out there always trying to make a dollar. They're involved um, in running around campuses trying to gather information. Like I, I think it's probably going to it's going to become one of the key issues uh, that we face in our locker rooms. I mean, the NFL's faced it more high profile than I've seen it uh, in the last 15 years in the recent you know two years. So I think it's more prevalent because there's more money involved. Um, and everybody's looking for a quick way to make a dollar. Um, and so, you know, I've been known to play blackjack myself. So, you know, I don't, it, it's a tough deal. And like I said, the, these young men are getting a lot of money that is uh, a lot right now. And there's not uh, other than trying to hand out advice and provide some parameters to it. You know, we talk about in recruiting, you, you recruit your own problems. You know, with this NIL situation, we've created our own problems in college sports. Do you favor, do you favor uh, injury reports at some level uh, in a conference to uh, some more information gets out there and not behind the scenes? I do. Uh, I, I'm for, the NFL is the best sports league, uh, in my opinion, which is not very, well-educated, but in my opinion, the best sports league in the world for a reason. So the more that we can streamline to some of those things, I think the better, especially now that we've kind of moved away from our collegiate model into more of a business model, then I think that we need to put those safeguards in place. And I do think providing information, um, you know, we provide an injury report every Thursday. Um, don't don't have to, but that's what we believe in doing. That's what I believe in doing. Coach, you guys have recruited the state of Texas pretty well. Um, does the addition of Texas help your footprint in that state at all? Well, I would say in the past we've recruited Texas really well. I think Coach Pinkle did an outstanding job. We haven't had as much success uh, as we would like to have had in Texas. Uh, we do have a couple of key players, in a Straw from Duncanville, Texas, who I believe will want to be one of the top corners in our league, uh, is from Texas. Uh, and, and Chad Bailey, our starting middle linebacker, is, is from the Houston area. So we've done a, a, a little bit of work there, but not quite as much as we'd like. I don't know. I think that's uncertain um, that um, Texas joining our league is going to therefore somehow have an impact on us recruiting the league, uh, recruiting Texas in some sort of way. I, I firmly believe it's more about relationships and NIL. Would you, on the gambling issue, would you like to see players be allowed to bet on pro sports? Do you feel like that's an issue? No, I don't want to see him be allowed to bet on pro sports. We got a lot of player, former players in our locker room that are playing in pro games. I mean, it's just, it's you're you're just opening up uh, too many issues. Uh, I think the way we have it, which is you're not allowed to gamble on NCAA sanctioned sports, whether it's high school, college, or uh, professional. I think that's the way it needs to be, and and we've got to have to continue to monitor and educate our players on um, the importance of doing that. Do you like your thoughts about, as an offensive-minded coach, about the changing clock rules, not you know being able to stop uh, on first down and until inside the last two minutes, and how it impacts how you call games? I think it's a nothing burger. <laughs> <laughs> I really do, because unless it's, I mean, the clock is still going to stop inside of two minutes. So, uh, rolling the clock the last play of the game, I mean, we're talking maybe seven less plays a game. I don't think it's going to have the impact that even the uh, people who are encouraging it, uh, I think it will have. Where do you think uh, the SEC and college football is in general uh, from an officiating standpoint on targeting, roughing the pass or pass interference? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I haven't had John McDay tell me how we're doing on it just yet, and that'll be after today, but if you catch me later. Uh, I. I I will say this, my personal belief on pass interference is we need to adopt more of an NFL model where there's no contact outside of five yards to make it more streamlined instead of a judgment call. Uh, what, what we consider holding by the offensive lineman and what we consider holding by deep DB are two different things. And I don't understand that holding's holding and same thing with a pass interference. But, uh, you know, when we leave it into uh, judgment calls, everybody's judgment's a little bit different, you know. Eli, what, what's the uh, future of athlete compensation? Is it this NIL model we have now? Is it something that would you like it to be something else? I think the future is unknown. 
I, th I think we're in a very uh, unknown situation. Um, and, and, you know, if I had the right answer, I'd probably give up coaching football and be Miss Cleo, 1-800-ELI, <laughs> and uh, you could get, get information for me. I'm not sure what it's going to go to. I know that, in my opinion right now, what we have is a broken system um, that, um, that needs some, some sort of guidance. Um, and we've been criticized as a, as a state because of our state law, which I think is unfair. Um, we don't criticize other people for being innovative in what they try to design for offense or defense or how they run their schemes to try to create, a success, create an opportunity for success. So why would we be criticized for creating an opportunity for success with us through our state laws? So I, I don't believe that that's a fair criticism by anybody. Um, and I think it's an unknown situation. Um, and the future is until there's some sort of um, crisis, I would assume, to, to create it, uh, create some streamlined standards. I don't know that there'll be that much change. Is it, it should the should the conference uh, enforce it and oversee it from a conference standpoint? I think that's an avenue that should you know could potentially be addressed. Um, you know, with all the realignment and strategies and all the the things that were talked about last year, there was an idea floated around that the SEC was going to become their own 16-team conference and have their own playoff. Why can't the SEC run their own NIL collective model or, or how we want to be governed? Uh, we do that with some recruiting restrictions. We do that with some admittance restrictions. Um, and I know they're going to say, you know, the conversation is, well, it puts us at a disadvantage amongst the other leagues. Um, but we got to come up with something. Why can't the SEC adopt revenue sharing? I'm just spitballing. Yeah, yeah, y'all are way above my pay grade. Yeah. ADs and presidents <laughs> meet later. My, um, my, my point is, is there, given what you just said, is there a duty or responsibility on the Big Ten and SEC now that they've separated themselves? From well, everyone? I mean, there are antitrust laws, and there's things that are involved uh, that are way above my pay grade uh, um, that, that we don't all understand. So it's not that easy. You know, I, I, I'm a history teacher by trade, and it's, Every time I come to one of these meetings, I'm blown away that the 13 colonies actually formed a union. <laughs> I mean, we can't agree on an eight or nine game schedule. Like how in the world they all got together and decided we're gonna defeat the British. Like, no, our, we gotta defend way too much coastline. As we can't play three games, you know. And then they expanded. Yeah, yeah some people expanded. Some people said, we'll take more of it. You know, it's, it's amazing. I don't know. All the time we've got. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> 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 <laughs>